the ministry tools that Jesus used periodically was words of knowledge. And every believer can get words of knowledge if we know how we can get them. Um, let me give you a few examples of how Jesus used words of knowledge. One day he met a man named Nathaniel who was very um, yeah, cynical. Uh, didn't really want to believe that anything good could come out of Nazareth. And he looked at him and said, I saw you when you were sitting under, the, under a tree. And that was the information that turned uh, Nathaniel from a cynic to a believer. Also another woman that, that he said, I, I know that you've had five husbands and the man that you're with now is not your husband. That helped open her up to where she became the, the evangelist to reach her entire neighborhood. And what's really cool about this is that Jesus never used the word of knowledge to condemn someone, but he used it to speak the divine destiny that God had for him. So he spoke to that woman and said, I see that you are a true worshiper in spirit and truth. So we can also get words of knowledge. But the thing that's hard about words of knowledge is we don't always know uh, if we are getting a word of knowledge or if it's just us possibly making it up. So that's why it's really important that we uh, ask people, hey, does anybody have pain here? Does this mean anything to you? Never force a word of knowledge on someone. Instead, offer it up. Hey, does this mean anything? Has this ever happened to you? Um, and as you learn to uh, put your antennas up uh, to what God's Holy Spirit may be saying you, uh, you'll be able to grow in uh, receiving words of knowledge. Now, there's, there's some ways that we can get words of knowledge. Uh, one is that we can see a word of knowledge. Sometimes some people see like words written on the foreheads of people or things above their heads or some people might um, see uh, just pictures. Sometimes when I'll see somebody, I'll say something like, can I tell you what I see in you? And they'll say, yeah. And then I'll see them, for example, driving a forklift. And I say, I see you driving a forklift. And they'll say, hey, that's what I do for work. How'd you know that? And that gives me an opportunity to share the gospel with them. Another way that you can, you know, get a word of knowledge is through seeing it is through dreams or visions. Uh, but also you can feel a word of knowledge. Um, Sometimes I'll be preaching or teaching and all of a sudden I'll get a pain in my body that's not my pain and I'll say, does somebody have pain here under their foot or in their shoulder? And, and many times someone there does have that pain and I'll pray for them and God will heal them. But also you can feel someone's uh, pain or, or feel something. For example, I was in Eastern Europe when one, one woman on my team said, I don't know why, but I'm, I'm really afraid, I'm shaking. And I looked at her and said, it's just a word of knowledge. You're just picking up things that, that are here and, and just release it and give it to God. Another woman on my team uh, looked at me and told me how, how all of a sudden she started having these thoughts bombard her about how prophecy and gifts of spirits all fake, it's all made up. And she thought, why am I thinking this? And then she looked over and there was five people with their arms crossed like this. Mm. And she realized, hmm, I think that's what they're dealing with. So she went, she ministered to them, prayed for them, and they opened up and they were, to receive, were able to receive further that evening. Um, another way that you can get word of knowledge is you can smell. Um, I don't get this, but I do have friends who can smell the presence of God, smell the presence of evil spirits. Uh, they can actually, uh, many times they'll be able to discern which spirits or, or which sins people are dealing with because of the smell, the, the, the strong smell. Uh, this does not happen to me, at least very often, uh, but it is possible. Another way that you can get a word of knowledge is just something just can come out of your mouth. Uh, I remember my mom once in, in Chile and South America, the neighbor gave us a cake and all of a sudden my mom said, there's glass inside of the cake. And sure enough, when they cut it, cut it open, shards and pieces of glass had fallen when the neighbor had broken a glass of a bottle of milk and accidentally gotten glass inside of that cake. So that can happen as, as well. You can also hear a, a word of knowledge. Uh, you can get a name. You could get a, a birth date or a phone number. You, you can get things. And sometimes it can be like a riddle and you're not quite sure what it is. And so as you get that, you go to God and say, hey, God, what does this mean? Or, or write it down and maybe you'll see that someone with that name or someone with that situation is going to show up later that day. So words of knowledge uh, is, are something anybody can get, especially if you know that what you're getting could be a word of knowledge. And then with great love and mercy and kindness, step out and see if it's a word of knowledge. And if you get spot on, you can see how God can really minister someone's life. Let me give you one more example. Uh, I was going out to my neighborhood one day just to share the gospel with people on the street. And I thought, Lord, give me the name of the person I'm going to meet. And I got the name of a person. I thought, ah, this is just me making it up. But an hour later, I was talking to a woman. I said, hey, what's your name? And she tells me the name that, that, that I felt that God has given me that morning. 
And I just began to tell her, hey, this is what God told me this morning about you. And I started sharing, and she just started weeping and crying. So it's really cool that in the same way that Jesus used words of knowledge, so we too can use words of knowledge as we step out to share the love and the power of God to people around us.